Episode 17 of the 100 year quest. Hell yeah, I have some other thoughts that I want to add to the review of this new entry in the series, or more or less touch upon a bit more diligently in regard with certain aspects that really do make this episode stand out and it makes it become the better entries of this whole arc and overall in the whole series. I like that it builds upon established tropes like Juvia and Grey, the fact that they have this weird romance, Gruvia. <laughs> I mean, from all the ships in the series with Nalu. Well, it looks pretty normal to me. Jerza. <laughs> <laughs> Groovia. <gasps> My icy hawk! How can you be so cool and still so hot? There's gotta be more of those because they're pretty much all wannabe couples. Groovia is kind of like the one that has the most water, in my opinion. I'm water and he's ice. We must be bound by fate. I can't believe I finally found my handsome prince. Except for Gajil and Levi because, well, they even become parents as, they, as she gets a baby and stuff like that. But they're more or less secondary. Levi is more of a secondary background character. Gajil used to be more in the front, but as they pushed him in the background, they made him a papa. Like a dead big dad. Anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, as I was saying, Groovia seems to hold the most water as the most shonen, romance, shoujo, semi, pseudo, whatever the Whatever this may be, it works, women eat it up, girls really like fairy tale because of all this tension between Natsu and Lucy or Grey and Juvia. Stop imagining him looking all hunky like that, okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm fine. What do you say we meet by the solar tree in the middle of Southgate Park? I can do that. Make sure you come alone tonight. You're one to be a member of fairy tale, huh? Oh yes, very much so. I mean, I personally don't mind, but who knows what the master will say. I promise I'll do whatever it Hey, it's fun, and even as a guy, it's interesting to enjoy. It's also great to see that a show actually improves on this trope and tries to develop it in such a way that it's organic and believable. <laughs> and adds to the overall character development interactions these beautiful people have with each other. It is kind of a wonder how well certain aspects of the show fit in the puzzle, considering how shit of a narrative <laughs> that the writer has implemented it throughout this whole series. This season has the better structure, as they have this whole quest they have to achieve with clear objectives and secondary activities they have to complete to reach their goal. It is fun, it's great, but as I said, I really, really do enjoy how they implement it in the combat. They made their relationship, the weird dynamic of Juvia being incredibly in love with Grey as part of the way of their defeating the enemy. Hey. It's kind of reminiscent to have their first got to know each other. I think it was like episode 27 or something like that from the first season. Well then, I give up. Goodbye. Where are you going? Why is my heart beating so fast? Would you at least tell me how... When she was first introduced as a villain, it was really fun to see her fall for Grey, like at first glance. I mean, duh, he's like the most handsome man like in Fiore. So it should have worked. In my opinion, Grey and Lucy would have been like the dream couple, because like Lucy is the queen of Magnolia. Now what? Do you know where everyone else is? No, I don't. I guess I should apologize for slapping you like that. Well, the maid outfit made it a little better, to be honest. I'm not so sure I needed to know that part. But hey, I mean, not to go to her, so.
That's how it is in Juvia got so popular. My beloved Grey. Yesterday I was so nervous I could barely even move. As a fun girl slash hot chick. They just it stuck to it. And plus Grey is kinda like this shoujo mean guy with complexities and stuff like that. And Juvia is kind of like the immature, insecure bit. It works for a romance, whatever. I let it slide. It's fun. It's a lot of comedy. It's beautiful to see. It works. It really evidences what anime is great at. This, cor this, um, this cheesiness. It's corny. It's fun. It's innocent, but also kind of nasty. It's a stark contrast that I really enjoy. It really makes this type of show stand out. And overall, fairy tale, its popularity is well earned for these masterful moments that are more or less written by themselves, considering how interesting and great these characters are. So, putting them in any scenario would make for some pretty good interactions. <laughs> It's very fun to see her fall for him. It's very interesting to see him try to accept the feelings as he talked with the other Juvia, the topless dancer one who flashed her books to him. Oh. Oh. And only to him, which is also a huge treat to add to this whole pile of greatness. It's also the fact that Juvia gets very jealous and very possessive around Grey, especially when he's around Lucy, or at least spoke in the same context with her. Besides, Lucy's one of us. Give his life! Give his life! Lucy's my rival! Lucy's my rival! Lucy's my rival! He loves her! Juvia considers Lucy her rival, and it's a fun gag that had kept on dragging from the first season to the 100 year quest. It's beautiful, it's great. Because now I found a new guild! Hey, girl! We will fight for Grey. Is it just me, or does that seem really weird? Are you jealous he was inside of me and not you? Uh... <laughs> this is really what brings the series to a bit of a higher level, as it does indeed try and succeeds to a staggering, plentiful degree in keeping Cat and Russians relevant, fun, and dynamic. 